Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the game up. I'm your host, Gamer K, and I've been wanting to do this video for a long time now, and it, I can finally do it. It's time for another top 13 here on the Game Hub. And if you can kind of tell by the somewhat theme I have going on, it is, again, again, all these videos this month were picked by my mother because it is her birth month. And oddly enough, she picked all Disney themed. So I was surprised for this one, but it's time to get into it. Kingdom Hearts has had some of the best bosses in gaming history. And some are also terrible. But one thing that they also did, what I think every Disney fan wanted to do in this game, is not just fight the impressive monsters throughout the game, but to also fight the Disney villains. And oh my god, did we get some good ones. And I swear, if Kingdom Hearts comes out again with uh, good boss fights for Disney villains... Although to be fair, none of there's none that are um that easy left. So it's time for me to grab my keyblade. Wait. Oh my god. Really? They make it look so easy. One sec. Oh. Huh. That actually worked. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get out your Keyblades, if you have some, and join me as I count down the top thir Gamer K's top 13 Disney Kingdom Hearts bosses. And why 13? Because here at the Game Hub, only the odd can be number one. Ah, <sighs> yes, yes, yes. Now, normally, for my top 13, I'd be a couple, there'd be a couple rules. Um... This one, I'm not going to have so many rules. Except, again, they have to be the Disney bosses. And also, I'm not counting any Disney original bosses that they added in here. Like um, the Hostile Program and Space Paranoids. Or um, the Experiment from, night, from, uh, from Halloween Town. Only Disney villains that are in the actual Disney movies... We'll be getting a fair shake at this. And thankfully, I don't have to include anyone from 358 Days Over 2. So that's a bonus. Well, let's unlock the first video. Starting off the list is honestly a pretty basic one to start off with. Near the end of the first game, and I'm going to be honest... I've never, ever beaten the first game, ever. I've gotten as far as Chernabog, and I, um, I didn't wimp out. I did not wimp out. Okay, maybe I did. But all in all, one of my favorite bosses from the first game, to start off the list, is what we all assume to be the main threat of the game. And that would be Maleficent. And I'm not doing her first boss fight because that was, all honesty, I had a harder time defeating uh, Ursula and um, Oogie Boogie more than I did her. So, but I'm talking about when it amps up to that killer scene, Maleficent's Dragon. I will admit, yeah, Maleficent's boss fights get better when she's in her dragon form. And there's two games to confirm this. The one thing I really love about the boss fight is how it's in this wide open area instead of the um, encapsulated uh, uh, villain's lair area. But the area where we fight her dragon boss is huge. So you have plenty of good time to move around. And also, it's pretty challenging for a final fight. Not... Well, I say final fight, but more like the final fight against this villain who's been antagonizing us throughout the entire journey. And not only that, but she also has she has her 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 um fireballs. She's got her green flame attack. She's got her chomping at you. She's got her. Actually, now that I think about it, she doesn't fly as much in this one as she does in Birth by Sleep, which is kind of odd. So yeah, Maleficent started off this list because technically she was the... Okay, 
I know I'm I'm being stupid when I say this, but I think she was the first Disney boss, which she wasn't. That was um Clayton. Boo. But overall, she was one of the first ones that had a real challenge to give us before the near the end of the game. So yeah, Maleficent, mistress of all evil, and one of Disney's first villains, definitely took a swing. Unfortunately, we'll fight her again, hopefully, in Once Upon a Dream. Next up, number 12 on the list is honestly, uh, well, what can I say about this boss fight? Um, yeah, well, you heard that, guys. Um, Oogie Boogie. One of my favorite villains, and honestly, for one of my favorite movies. Uh, Oogie Boogie is the kind of basic gambler, lazy dude boss fight. You don't really fight him as you do fight his contraptions. And the boss fight that gets on this list is his boss fight in Kingdom Hearts 2. Because the Kingdom Hearts 1 boss was pretty simple to dodge i don't think i ever died on that one uh when i played it when i was younger but number two was a lot harder and a lot more enjoyable especially with the added addition of the limit attacks with each character and yeah i used jack constant i actually didn't use jack in that battle because oogie being revived he st he takes over this toy shop and changes the conveyor belts a little bit into a absolute death trap and i love it symbolizing again his original boss fight in number one by having to be under the same plat the same uh plat the same row as his platform you will be using a reaction command to send nine boxes on top of his platform in order to break the glass and bring him down in order for us to hit him. He is only vulnerable for a little bit of time. So you're going to have to repeat the process a good number of times. If you want to fight defeat Ogi. And one of the best things about it. Is the contraptions itself. Of how quickly he turned Santa's toy war workshop. Into basically a death trap. And I love it. He sends out ba goodie bags. with con Which contain the uh, white knight heartless. Put up the image of it. He will have... Uh, he'll After the first round of attack, he will start sending electrical currents that will shoot out and go one of three ways. So you will have to uh, dodge them and also be hitting the boxes in order to do that again. And he'll also send out a big punch glove, which will move over and deal a lot of damage to you. Not only that, but the conveyor belts are moving out as you are fighting and there's a big spikes basically temple of doom spike walls behind you so you will have to constantly be moving what's the catch of this each conveyor belt has that magical barrier to prevent us from leaving them the only way to change is to go to the front of the area and wait for the line the blue lines on the squares to line up so you can travel to the next one in order to get through to oogie boogie's location I will say, even though Oogie Boogie is, can, everyone can basically say is the laziest villain to be in Kingdom Hearts. I mean, even Demix does more than he does. But Oogie does what he does best. Death traps, making the player being really pissed off and only giving you a short window to attack him. The only reason he's lower on the list, again, is... Uh, considering it is Oogie Boogie, people kind of expected his boss fight to be, you know, pretty, gen pretty well, not generic, but basically what it was in the first game. And they improved upon it, too. So, whoa, he's the gambling boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This one is on the list. Because of hype a little bit. But bear with me. Bear with me. Yes. 
I put a boss from Port Royal Tech. Oh no, wait. Uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean World in this list, and it's not the one you are thinking of. Davy Jones is number eleven because I will admit this is a new one for me. I never expected to like the Davy Jones boss fight this much, nor did I think we were going to get it. To, because all honesty, I thought they were going to do the BS thing that they did with Frollo when they had the War Goyle be our, compet our opponent. But for the Caribbean, Davy Jones, end of the game, end of the level, they did it great. They had the this fear of being on his pirate ship, the on the on the Flying Dutchman, they had the drama of the whirlpool scene of worlds e at at world's end. They even had it raining, like they could have just edited out the raining, but it's an important factor because the rain and the storms is what makes the scene so gripping. And they do it all with no heartless, no heartless whatsoever. No additional help, except for a couple times you will have to go back and attack the giant kraken or mo whatever monster it is in the center. Right, show the image. And we are fighting him mano a mano with all four of us. And it's fantastic. Because when have we ever fought a human-sized uh, character from Kingdom Hearts that did not have a heartless help? Barbosa technically had it with the Illuminator. Clayton had it with the Stealth Sneak. Uh, okay, technically Sean Yu. But no, Sean Yu had heartless help constantly. So to have Davy Jones, the undead pirate, have us fighting him mano a mano with his sword skills and abilities and everything... It just makes the boss fight even more intense and personal. And the way they edited up At World's End to fit into Kingdom Hearts a little bit by eliminating a good majority of characters, they did root, they did it perfectly. And the boss fight is so good, especially because Davy Jones does what he does best and he develops into his ship to move around the to move around the stage. And it's done so much so that I love fighting him every time I replay the game. And actually, I'm thinking about replaying it again uh, one of these days. And when I get there, I can't wait to fight Davy Jones once again. It's lower on the list because the other bosses have that more... Disney magical quality that comes to the boss fights. So, we don't fear death, Davy Jones, but you, your boss fight definitely made us work for staying alive. So, yeah. When was the last time we got a original boss fight that wasn't just fighting a character or fighting a giant monster with them? Birth by Sleep surprised me. Birth by Sleep surprised me in the way that I it did not do... I mean, yeah, the trailer kind of gave a lot of stuff away, but at the same time, there were points where I was really surprised. Henceforth, number 10 on the list, our boss fight with Rusify or Lucifer. No, not you! Go! Where did these jokes come from? No, I am obviously talking about the Lucifer boss fight from Castle of Dreams. And when you say to Square Enix and Tatsuya Nomura, and when you tell him... Um, yeah, we want you, we're going to do a Cinderella. Can you come up with a fun Disney boss fight? Because you already have two of your own bosses in here. What can you do for us? And he probably said, well, why don't we shrink down uh, one of the characters and have them fight Lucifer, the cat? That actually works. And the boss fight is exactly what you expect from it. And it's br brilliant. No, no unversed help. 
nothing else in the game. Nothing else helps Lucifer. It's just Ventus and Lucifer fighting around the area, and it's cool. And again, it's brilliant. Not only does Lucifer have you in size, but this is Ven's. Because he goes to... No, he goes to Woodlands first. Yeah, he goes to the Woodlands first. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And technically, his Ven story is the first uh, chapter of the Cinderella... Of the Castle of Dreams story. Okay, yes, I know. I'm babbling. I'm getting to it. The Lucifer boss fight does everything. It's simple, but it's done brilliantly simple. It could have been so lame like other Disney bosses in the in us in uh, Kingdom Hearts, but this one takes it to a whole new level. Not only does Lucifer just swipe at you and jump on the furniture and jump higher for a body slam attack, but you can actually counter him and do a rodeo th uh, attack where you will be on his back and you will have to butt press the buttons at the right time to avoid getting knocked off in order to rode him. Like, bring him right to a raw wall, hit himself, and then you can counter-attack. And again, the boss fight is simple. It is quick, but it's a simply quick boss fight that was brilliantly designed and executed. So, the cat may have been out of the bag, but Lucifer definitely gave us one... Can I do a cat joke here? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll use up my nine lies if I do one of those jokes. Yes, yes, I, I know he's had multiple boss fights in the in the series. Yes, I am aware. Yes, I know it. I know people are gonna call me out for which one I choose. Can you let me get to this? I know, I know, I know that there's multiple boss fights. In them, okay, yeah, I get the concept. There are times that this that this text voice is gonna be the death of me half the, the time. But if you can't figure it out, yep, it's my favorite Disney villain, ranking in near the half way of the list. We've got the king, the ruler of the underworld, the snarky god of the dead, Hades. Oh my god, I love this character so much. So yeah, Hades has. Because Olympus Coliseum or Olympus or whatever they do has had the most entries in all the Kingdom Hearts games. Actually, yeah, it's been in every single Kingdom Hearts game. Now, wait, has it? Except for... Nope, even Chain of Memories in 358 Days Over 2, they added this in. So, yeah. And we fight Hades in every single one except for 358 Days. Oh, no, wait. He doesn't appear in 358 Days Over 2. Yeah. Regardless. Hades has probably the most amount of boss fights in the entire Kingdom Hearts series. So, unless you can prove otherwise, that's my statement. And the boss fight I'm going with... I was hoping we'd fight him in, the, in number three, but... You know, beggars can't be choosers. But I am choosing his boss fight from Kingdom Hearts 2 in the main story. I'm not doing the the, the uh, Tournament Cup bosses because those are enough on their own. So, yeah. So, basically, the one thing I love about Hades' boss fight in this one is how when we first fight him, we can't hurt him at all. Because, yeah, it's his underworld. So he's not going to lose any... Yeah. Which, again, I really love that little gimmick. I do love it. And then it's brought even further into his next boss fight, which is at the end of the Olympus Coliseum section of Kingdom Hearts 2. And it is gloriously done. After Wonder Boy, Hercules jumps in to save Meg. Again, really good at tying in the, the actual movie within number two and number three you're genius guys I, I i love it having hades be invulnerable until hurt gets back i mean yeah we we're fighting with the badass swordsman Orin, which i freaking love this dude fighting with him is not enough as long as hades is red he is invincible and that's where hurt's 
Aura Sphere ability comes in. What is he, Lucario? <laughs> we get to nullify Hades' uh, uh, invincibility, and we and the real fight with the God of the Dead begins. A lot feel the heat, throwing fireballs at us, spinning a ring of fire around us in order to get back his, his, his invulnerability, and just swinging his fists at us. Even the, and again, it's in the small arena ring, so we don't have that much maneuverab maneuverability. And if I recall, he'll shoot out a fireball and shoot out spits of fire pits at us. Which I do love. I love how Hades' attack pattern is so kind of uh, basic, but at the same time, it keeps you on your toes. And yeah, he obviously doesn't die because it's the God of the Dead, so... Again, love the boss fight. Love Hades. He's at the bottom of the list because the other bosses just have more meat to them. So, let's continue, guys. Oh, come on. It's just only halftime. We're staying in Olympus right now because our first boss fight of Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> has to be on here. And yes, I do know that there are two, technically two bosses before this, but I'm counting this one as an ending of, of an ending boss fight. After game after game of fighting these guys, we get to fight the other ones correctly. We get to fight the Titans, ladies and gentlemen. We get to fight the Lava Titan, the Ice Titan, fully this time, without it being kind of a pushover in uh, Kingdom Hearts 1. And we get to fight, finally, the Tornado Titan. When I saw these, I almost passed out from excitement. The, I mean, yeah, the first boss fight, so we're getting into the motion of learning the new combat mechanics of Kingdom Hearts 3. But at the same time, I was all ready for it. I was so freaking ready. And the fact that we have to fight to the two of them first before we get to the main fight of the hurricane is glorious. We we fight by climbing on top of, of technically Zeus's pillar that he's trapped in, fighting off the, the ice titan, fighting off the Lava Titan, respectively. Doesn't matter which one you take out first, as long as you do it. And then we get the Tornado Titan, which will shoot out ice crystals, fireballs at us, where we will have to dive, do the, do the free fall thing. I mean, I I'm going crazy because this is one of my favorite boss fights in Kingdom Hearts 3 because I love Hercules. I've waited so long to fight the other two Titans after beating the Rock Titan in number one and by beating the ice titan which again a lot more easier than a lot more easier than it looks but just the fact that we get to fight these colossal titans literally it's just such an amazing start to the kingdom hearts three and it's just glorious. It's just super, super amazing. And it's... That's all I gotta say about this. Next up... Okay, we're going back to Birth by Sleep right now. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna be honest. Birth by Sleep may have some of the best bosses when it comes to the Disney villains. Or Disney bosses in general. Because this one, I did not see coming when they advertised this years ago. I was skeptical of what they were going to do with these worlds. And it's so good they use it twice and it's basically the same thing. So I'm going to put it on here. The Spirit of the Magic Mirror from Dwarf Woodlands. If you told me that we would be fighting the face of the magic mirror of Snow White within its mirror, where it will basically overpower you with magical and illusion attacks, I would say that you were taking too much, uh, too much of the, um, uh, pixie dust, my friend. 
I know it's the wrong movie, but it's Disney, so regardless. But the boss fight does so well to keep you on your toes. Not only do you fight it as slow-moving Terra, but you also fight it as well-magical, magic-rounded Aqua, which I love this boss fight. It is almost at the middle. It is path. It is, again, at the halfway mark of my list because of that. I mean, yeah, we, but we fight it twice, and it doesn't really do anything different, but it's still a great boss fight. It really is. It will create a, two walls of its face, and you will have to find the one face that's smiling in order to damage it. It will create a circle around you where you will have to kind of spin around in order to find the face and go straight forward. And they'll, they'll shoot ice blasts at you, which... I wasn't expecting that. And then it will just somewhat move forward to you and damage you as you as it tackle tackles you, I guess. And then if you hit it enough times, it will fall fall into the magical ground and you will be able to hit it for a bit. It doesn't have that much health, but the one thing that that gets the magic mirror so high on this list, as high as I can put it, is the fact that the atmosphere we have is glorious. We have the purple mystical floor. We have the, the shifting color, black and purple, that correlate to the Evil Queen's robes. The, the area is perfect. The concept of the Evil Queen throwing a potion onto the magic mirror in order for us to get sucked in instead of the Japanese version where her negativity turns the magic mirror into an unversed, which I don't really care for that. I It's just the magic mirror. It's not an unversed. But the concept is what gets it on here. That's one thing I'll always do for a boss fight. If concept is done fantastically and it's something that could never be reproduced anywhere, it gets higher on the list, regardless if the boss fight's shit or not. Concept, for me, outweighs how epic the boss fight is. So Magic Mirror, Magic Mirror, thank you for joining us in this boss fight. And now go away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at number six, and how about a change? Yeah, no, 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 I'm not going to do, I'm not going to uh, do editing or anything. I'm, uh, but can you guys even see me? The curtain fell down, didn't it? All right, seriously, I'm the star of the show here, not him. Can Pull the rope. Thank you. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, the boss fight from Timeless River, Pete, of all things, gets higher on the list than some of the best Disney villains. I love Pete's boss fight for, again, a number of reasons. Again, concept is everything. Even though we... And again, this boss fight is taking place in the past. So fighting present Pete is fantastic. And yeah, we fight him in uh, Olympus Coliseum, but that boss fight was kind of deterred for me, be mostly because we were on a time limit. We had to defend Megara constantly. Although, although defending Megara isn't really... Um, that uh, bad of a thing. So, um, uh, what was I talking about again? Oh, right, Pete. His boss fight in Timeless River is fantastic. We start off in a we start off in a basic generic area, and his attack patterns are pretty much the same. He'll do the whole get out of my way, where he'll throw some punches and then do a shock wave. He'll do his bowling ball attack, which I will admit, is stupid, but it's beautiful. Like, a seeking explosive bowling ball. And, I mean, yeah, he will involve some Heartless into the boss fight as well. But one of the other cool things is how every so often, once we deplete his health, he will take us through the four levels that we did where we had to do the challenges in order to get... Uh, through the level, which I love. We go into, uh, what was them? Uh, 
actually we go into them backwards. I mean, yeah, you can do them in any order you want, but chronologically we go backwards. We start in Mickey's house and then we go to the, uh, uh, the burning building. Then we'll go to the, uh, shrinking. We'll go to the Gulliver's travel kind of town. And then we'll end up in the construction zone, which is freaking fantastic. And I do love how the environment stuff will play on you. The fire will attack you. The black hole will attack you. Uh, the towers will blast you. So basically everything that you used in those four sections is now against you. And then the, for the final thing at the construction site, when Pete does his shockwave attack, it will do the same thing that the hammers do. And will send us flying through the air, which will allow us to do the aerial spiral reaction command and hit Pete a good number of times. And that is the perfect way to end the boss fight. When you get that final hit in on him, and basically he killed himself. He basically sent him into the air for us. So that's always good. Pete is a great boss fight in Timeless River because he's so out of place. He's so bizarrely strong in this boss fight and we also have his old self helping us fight him but once in a while his old self will get in the way constantly so we'll have to basically we're fighting with two and a half beats okay we're going back to number one with here ladies and gentlemen and yes we're going with another olympus coliseum boss fight and i think you all know who it is the boss fight number two kind of put a damper on things. But number one was one of the hardest bosses for me as a kid. We're going with Cerberus. My favorite Greek mythological monster. And quite an impressive boss fight in Kingdom Hearts 1. Because we've only fought like... Uh, now that I think about it, we do fight... Uh, the guard armor and the trick master before we've come to Olympus Coliseum. And once we get through this, we'll have to fight Diz Hades guard dog. And just its so stature and size is a threat alone to any newbie player, especially considering Kingdom Hearts 1's combat mechanics and uh, platform sections uh, kind of made the whole thing feel clunky and weighed into and heavy. But the boss fight with Cerberus just oozes skepts like size and um and wonderment considering the fact that he has amazing attacks that were scrapped from the second one technically he'll he'll use his three heads to bite at you and get your companions he'll swipe he'll be walking a claw all over the coliseum floor and then he'll shoot fireballs at us, which he kept from number two. And then one of the best ones, he will spew darkness from his mouth into the floor, which will create pillars at us. And it's just beautiful. You don't even have to be near him for him to hit you with this because it will go throughout the floor. So, it, so he's great at long distance attacks and short distance attacks. And that's what makes Cerberus such a really fun boss fight. And again... He's halfway up the list, ladies and gentlemen. So the boss fight was that great. And because it was, tech, again, our first Disney boss fight in Kingdom Hearts. So yeah, thinking about that, we've waited a couple levels to get an actual boss fight. And we end up fighting a villain that's not even a villain. More of a, yeah, a side thing but overall Cerberus did give us something to enjoy through and it's what kept standards high for a majority of King, the Kingdom Hearts Disney bosses yeah that's not really much to say yeah okay for some reason we're going back to birth by sleep constantly because this boss fight again is one of my favorites and it's such again it sucked in number one but it was great here wow kingdom hearts kind of does that constantly some of them suck in number one some of them are great in birth by sleep some of them suck in birth by sleep but some of them are great in number one and this is an example of one get out your fire spells ladies and gentlemen because you'll need them to make this boss fight fun it is the boss fight with Captain Hook in Birth by Sleep. And we're fighting then. And I love 
love, love, love this boss fight to no end. For three main reasons. That reason, the reasons why this one overshines the boss fight in in number one. Uh, one thing I also want to say is that it's kind of weird that both Neverland, yeah, both Neverlands are the final areas before the finale thing of the game of Birth by Sleep and number one. I find that amusing. Oh my God! It's also the ending thing of three five eight days over two. Huh. I never thought of that. Well, continuing on, then fights uh, Captain Hook in in a stone platform surrounded by water right next to Skull Rock. And this boss fight definitely has a really cool concept with it. Whereas in uh, number one, we fight him on, a, on the deck of his ship. It just feels kind of easy to not get hit by his attacks and plus if you use fire spells on him his coat will catch fire and it will damage him and plus we can hit him across uh off the boat off the ship and he will just have to do that cartoon thing and come back and plus he'll throw his present bombs and everything and his sword skills but it does it's so much better here because you have a very limited area to fight i mean yeah you do have the glide ability but Unlike in Kingdom Hearts 1, it's not overly powered and overly abused constantly. Which I do like. Like, we're not constantly floating in the level and avoiding his attacks. And one thing I also love is that we can hit him hard enough to throw him into the water where TikTok is waiting to take a snack. And I do love that. His, his techniques are just as similar in number 1, but amped up to the next level. And I do love that. Another thing I really love about his boss fight is again his weakness to fire is still is still um what's the word uh exploitable. If you do a lot of fire attacks with Ven, you will be getting a lot more damage. And if you use a lot of fire attacks, you will activate the firestorm limit attack or uh, uh change something. But the combat, the setting. And the effect that they kept his fire weakness so easily to exploit. And the fact that TikTok is added into the boss fight instead of being uh, not used in the last one. Okay, to be fair, we were in the sky, so TikTok wouldn't be there. But still, this is what makes Captain Hook one of my favorite boss fights from Birth by Sleep. But three other bosses beat him out for the top three spots. So let's get to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The number three spot on my Kingdom Hearts Disney bosses goes to a fantastic villain, goes to a fantastic boss fight that I don't think people were expecting it to be as good. We have Scar, ladies and gentlemen, and it is done so freaking well. Finally, we get to fight one of the best villains in Disney, and the boss fight is not so freaking easy. Because in lion form, we can barely guard. We have no dry form. So we will just have to use our skills as a lion cub in order to defeat this amazing lion. Not only that, but he's imbued with the dark powers. And I kind of like that. Not only does he have his basic s scratching attacks and pouncing attacks, which will in turn give us a reaction command in order to tussle and pin him and attack him. But his other attacks are honestly what make this boss fight super amazing. For one, he will shroud himself in thunder, and as he pounces towards you, the thunderbolts will come behind him. And that's freaking amazing. He'll light himself on fire and pounce again, and then he'll just turn himself into pure darkness and run all around the field before darting at you. I will say, if you haven't mastered using the slide ability when you're running in order to dodge before this boss fight i would practice a couple times in this in the cave area before the boss fight because trust me if you don't know how to slide you're gonna get hit a lot and scar was one of the few bosses in number two that really killed me a couple times and made me work for that victory 
Also, can anyone explain why there's a skull at the top of a... Uh, of pride rock for some reason and also when scar becomes a heartless i love how the whole atmosphere of the sky changes color for some reason it, but it, it just adds to the atmosphere of how epic this boss fight is it's just non-stop epicness it's a it's a quick it's not a quick boss fight but he does move very quickly so you will have to think on your paws if you want to survive so yeah, ironically, you better be prepared. That was a great joke. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to get a lot of looks for this next one. Really? This is a hard boss for you? It's not that the boss was hard. Did I die a couple times fighting it? Yes. Was it enjoyable? Yes. Were you expecting it? Absolutely not. 221 Sparky is the number two boss fight for Disney Kingdom Hearts bosses, for me at least. Coming seemingly out of absolute freaking nowhere after we free 626 in Terra Story, Jumba point makes it a point to say that his experiments do what they're told to do as he puts Sparky into a test tube and activates him, and we get a boss fight with one of the best cousins. And, all honesty, I don't think any of the other ones from Lilo and Stitch could have had such an amazing boss fight as Sparky. He's so adorable, but at the same time, his attacks are vicious, fast, and detrimental to your health. Sparky will, sh will, will turn into his lightning bolt form and dart at you. And dart at you with speed. He'll take he'll he'll possess the two guns in the in the room and shoot at you. He'll get into the center of the arena and shoot out sparking sparking electrical balls. When you're too close to him, he'll do a discharge attack to shock you. And he moves so quick that it's almost impossible to catch him off guard half the time. You got to be really smart in order to take on this electrical menace. And again, what gets him at the top of the list is I was expecting a Gantu fight in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep when they revealed the world. And I got one. Was I expecting an unverse boss? Yeah, because basically we're just in the ship at the beginning of the movie, so there's not that much characters that we can be used to fight. But when they had the brilliant idea to bring Sparky the first cousin released in the uh, sequel spinoff movie. And considering his electrical attacks means that it, all your thunder magic is nullified. Add to the fact that we're in the prison area where he can take over the guns to give us another attack, to give him another attack option. And the fact that, is a, that he moves so quick that pinpointing him is... I mean, the lock-on helps, but he moves so quick that you'll have to re-adjust your move in order to get to hit him. Again, I could not have planned to fight Sparky at all in anything. I mean, this is so far out of left field that I'm surprised it's number two, to be honest. Like, no, if, if you told me they were doing a Lilo and Stitch world years ago and i was happy for it if you told me that i was gonna be fighting with sparky i wouldn't have believed you you could have told me that we would have been fighting pleakly in nani's house when he's dressed up as multiple of his multiple female characters and i would have believed you more than fighting sparky all i know is is that this little dude gave us an electrifying boss fight but one boss fight shockingly beat him out Let's go. Okay. Um. This is a shock for me that this boss is number one. I mean, I know I made the list and everything. I mean, I had to go through all the pros and cons of all these boss fights. But never did I think that a boss fight from a game with 
that a lot of people either hated or disliked a good amount. We're diving into the dreams here, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, yeah, Dream Drop Distance is number one, has a number one for once. And it's not a worse boss list. For those of you who are wondering, because if you think about it, there are technically only a good number of Disney bosses in Dream Drop Distance. And one of them is one that hits us so hard. All right. Rinsler from The Grid. Yeah. This boss fight is one of the... Again, I've said this a lot in this list, but Rinsler is one of the boss fights in Dream Drop Distance that gave me such a hard time. I died a lot fighting him. And it just works. Fighting Rinsler is one of the best decisions they could ever have done in the Kingdom Hearts world, in the Kingdom Hearts series. Especially having Sora fight him and not fighting Riku. Because if Riku fought Rinsler, it wouldn't have been as epic. Because, because of number two of how we went, what we did with Tron, and the fact that we have to, like, for those of you who actually watched the, the Tron sequel and understand that Tron is Rinsler, it just hits you. I mean, yeah, they explain it in uh, King, in uh, the game. But also, it just hits hard. It hits so freaking hard. And it hurts. Having to fight not just a amazing boss fight, but to fight a friend is more than painful. Rinsler's whole attack pattern is basically fast, furious, and vicious. He'll throw his his discs at you multiple times. I mean, yeah, you can reflect them, but he'll just get right up in your face with e extreme speed and constantly dish out combos to you, and you won't see them coming. Not only that, but once in a while, he'll flip the stage so he'll be upside down, which screws you over big time. And then when he flips it upside, right upside up, he'll be preparing like a crash attack before you can even get your footing straight. And yeah, having the two the two dream eaters help you kind of works, but also because his attacks are so fast and furious that you that the, he will take them try to take them out as well. Fighting and plus his health bar is so massive from where the from where the level is that it's epic. It will make you want to take on Prankster's Paradise before you get to the grid, just so you'll have that extra boost in abilities and extra power-ups. But yeah, the defeating Rinsler scene, where Sora kind of shows the shadow of his uh, space paranoids form as he reprograms Rinsler, and the one scene where the floor breaks, and when Sora reaches out, calls out Tron, he wakes up and reaches out, and then we see tr him fall into the dark digital abyss. I'm going to be honest. That's like the scene within Tron Legacy and this have the best parts of both sections. Making us feel bad that we're fighting our good friend who was a great character in Kingdom Hearts 2. And not only that, but the boss fight has everything. A great com a great attack set, a great gimmick, an amazing atmosphere, and just an emotional barrage that you're fighting. I mean, yeah, we fought the we sometimes fight some of the characters that we work with in the game, but nowhere to this extent where they're not being mind controlled. He's just basically been erased and he's just a mindless drone. And I do love that. And again, it's all in his attack sequences that make this boss fight so difficult, but at the same time, so enjoyable that Rinsler gets the number one spot for my Kingdom Hearts Disney bosses. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you really enjoyed the list. If you have some thoughts, place them down in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe down below, and join me next week as we end August by going right back into our my favorite card game where we're going to
complete our goal before the stroke of midnight. This is Gamer K, logging out.